Um, we are coming to you with a new episode today, and I hope you're, get, you're having a great day, whether it is bright or maybe still dark and early in the morning or your lunchtime, or maybe it is late at night. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Open Infra Live is an interactive show that is bringing you production case studies, um, open source demos, industry conversations with experts, and as well as updates from the global open source community. And this show would not be possible without our valued members. And I would like to just take a moment to, to thank them. Um, and if you don't see the logo of your organization on this slide, um, don't be disappointed, that can be fixed. Go to openinfra.dev slash join and check out how uh, you or your organization can join the foundation as a member. My name is Ildiko Vancha and I will be your host for today's show. And uh, before we dive into the content, um, I mentioned that Open Infra Live is an interactive show, which means that we need you to participate. Uh, we are streaming the show live to YouTube and LinkedIn. So if you have any questions or comments, you can go and add that to the comments section and we will um, answer and reflect to as many of those questions and comments as we can during the show. And now let's dive into the content. Today's episode is full of um, information, news and updates, and you will be able to learn all that there is to know about the Computing Force Network Working Group, um, as well as their missions, goals and activities. On today's show, I have a few of the founders and active contributors to the Working Group and um, they will tell you all that you need to know about CFN. And before they start um, their presentation, I would also like to ask the group uh, and the speakers to please introduce yourselves briefly. If we can bring everyone on screen. Hello, I'm Jian Yu from China Mobile. I'm uh, working for uh, automation and integration tools in China Mobile, and I'm also uh, working for uh, promoting Computing Force Network Working Group. Um, we are very glad to uh, have this opportunity to introduce CFN Working Group, and thank you for making an arrangement for this. That's me. Uh, Xie Chao, maybe go next. Hello, everyone. My name is Geng Xia Chao, and I'm from Inspur. Um, and uh, I uh, mainly uh, take responsibility for the ubiquitous computing scheduling group, including the design, the development, and the relevant open source works. Um, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to uh, introduce the many work of our group to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Chewy? Jing uh, are you online? Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Jin Tongwan from China Mobile. So I'm responsible for the DPU research. Very glad to see you and introduce the computing offload subgroup. Okay, that's me, thank you. Uh, sorry, Eric, I just want letting you know that uh, because of the network issue, I closed my uh, camera and Chi Hui said that she just got lost for network. Okay. And uh, uh, Huang Lei, are you online? Oh yes, hello everyone. I'm Lei Huang from China Mobile and I am the uh, member of CFN and RSL PTL of Cloud Native. Oh uh, no, Computing Native, sorry. And um, it is my honor to be uh, invited to the live show and I will introduce my part to you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, 
as it is a live show, sometimes we do have um, technical difficulties, but that will not stop us from bringing you the content. Um, so uh, let's start with the um, introduction um, of the working group. And um, if when Chiu is back, uh, she can also introduce herself um, during that intro segment. Uh, Hui, are you online? Yes, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, loud and clear. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm sorry for my um, internet issue. And now are we going to start the introduction of the Computility Network, right? Yes, go ahead. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Sorry. Yes. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. I'll just um, start. Thank you, guys. Um, so firstly, a, a delayed introduction about myself. Um, my name is Chi Hui Zhao. I'm from China Mobile. And currently, I'm working at the CFN group of uh, China Mobile. And also, I'm, uh, 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 I have done my work related to the cloud native as well as the uh, computer native, which is a uh, technology related to the cross architecture um, and heterogeneous um, hardwares. So then I'll start my introduction. So for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, I'll introduce the computer utility network and the CFM backgrounds. Uh, okay, so Christian, can we go to the next uh, slide, please? Okay, cool. So firstly, let's look at the background. So computing capability, um, which we call it compute utility in our system, is the hardest topic for the all industry right now. Everybody is talking about buying a GPU card. Everybody is using the large model kind of things. And China Mobile, uh, together with some other telco operators, uh, we have already got this trend, but how can we join this? We are super good at the network, and some of us have a large amount of the infrastructures, and we may have the um, public cloud, some PaaS services, SaaS services. So under this condition, we are considering like uh, systematically construct a new information inf infrastructure. Uh, this new infrastructure is focused on the 5G uh, compute utility network and ability as a service platform. And based on this infrastructure, uh, we are trying to build a new information service system uh, to provide our uh, customers with the connectivity and computability and ability uh, through a one-stop um, service station. And uh, among all of this, computing ability is one of the key contents. And then next slide, please. Okay. Um, so uh, let's look at uh, what is a compute utility network. So by looking at these two words, it's obvious that uh, it, it has two parts, computing ability and network. And we're using these two uh, together with some other technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, big data, and security to form, form this uh, new information infrastructure, which can provide our customers with the ubiquitous um, network, computing, and intelligence. Our goal with the Compute Utility Network is to promote the Compute Utility to become a common utility just like the water and electricity. So as long as our users can get access to the network, it can have the ability to use the uh, Compute Utility existing in the whole system. And um, it, with this goal uh, for our operators as well as our um vendors and all the uh, industries, the goal of us is to like uh, construct a well-covered network and a, a good computing uh, resource centers and achieve some intelligent collaboration among all these capabilities. 
So this is the overview of the Compute Utility Network. And next slide, please. OK, so uh, this is the high level logical architecture of um, Compute Utility Network. So, uh, so firstly, we look at the bottom. It is the infrastructure layer. Uh, it contains all kinds of computing resources, uh, which can, may come from the public cloud, private cloud, the operator's network cloud, uh, and some central size, edge size, and even the user terminals. So anything, as long as it has the computing capabilities, is in the system. And it also contains the network links, such as the um, optical fiber network, uh, wireless network, uh, DC network, IDC network. And uh, we are trying to use all these network and computing resources to build a, a net or a grid. And this net or grid is the base for the whole uh, computer utility network. And then in the middle, uh, is the orchestration and management layer. Uh, we call it the orchestration center. Uh, it is in charge of uh, processing the tasks uh, received by the whole systems. And this center has the global view of the whole system, like where is the computing resources, um, how many flops computer utility it has, uh, what is the best route uh, to direct our user uh, computing tasks to the resources. So um, uh, it, it is in charge of the orchestration and the scheduling. And at the top, uh, it is it's the uh, service and operation layer. It is the interface for the computing utility network to actually interact with the users. So. Uh, uh, that's the high level architecture of the system. Before we move forward, I have a quick question to this slide. Um, yeah. In my, uh, as I can see, and, and you talked about, and I can also see it on the diagram that the uh, computing force network concept and architecture has these two like main components, the, uh, the computing resources and the network. And these mm -hmm. components are kind of fundamental to the cloud provider as well as telecom and network provider industry. And mm -hmm. CFN seems to be creating a strong convergence between these two. Can you mm -hmm. tell a bit more about how CFN relates to uh, these two main components and the, the convergence of them? Like, what is the relationship between these? Okay, okay. Uh, that's a really good question. So, um, firstly, I have to say that the CFN and the existing cloud system and network system, they are coming from the same region. Uh, but actually, the CFN is a more diverse system. Uh, so firstly, we can see that um, CFN contains more types of computing resources. Uh, we define every hardware and software, as long as it can provide the computing capabilities, it is the computing resources. And also, uh, one thing that haven't uh, been covered within this uh, architecture is that uh, the CFN is not only trying to achieve the unified orchestration of computing resources and network uh, that uh, that can be easily achieved by a strong cloud management platform of the cloud and network, but also the CFN is trying to exploring the possibility of converge the uh, computing resources and network uh, in terms of morphology or protocol, for example, um, we are trying to use the network transmission device to do some simple uh, computation work, or we're trying to carry the uh, computing capability of the certain devices in the network protocol. So uh, I have to say that these two comes from the same region, but um, they are the CFN is definitely targeting on a more um, intelligent and more complex systems. So um, that's that's the answer to this. Okay. Uh, if 
if no more questions, then uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, and I think maybe with uh, this page, uh, it is better. Uh, it can help us to better understand what is um, CFN and what is the advantage of it. So uh, we have summarized uh, three new experience that you may get with the Compute Utility Network. The first one is end-to-end -end, uh, consistent service quality. Um, a typical use case uh, for this uh, is the Internet of Vehicles. Um, uh, usually how to ensure the end-to-end -end consistent, consistent service quality for a moving car is the key problem here. Uh, traditionally, we have to take care of the uh, signal switch among all the base stations. We have to deploy the processing softwares at different cloud sites to provide the fastest response to the moving cars. We also need to consider about the uh, how to synchronize the data among all those processing software instances. But if with the Compute Utility Network, all the collaboration, decisions, configurations can be controlled by the orchestration center, which is um, supported by the artificial intelligence. For example, uh, the systems can help to predict the driving trace of the car. It can help to pre-deploy the um, applications, the software. It can help to like uh, pre-configure the net networks, and it can even help to like predict the best signal switch time. So uh, CFN is trying to uh, ensure our customers with a a more automatic uh, system. And the second experience that our customers can get is the task as a service. So currently, uh, we're trying to apply services from the cloud provider. We, we need to tell the system that uh, what kind of services or resources we need and where we want them. Uh, so it's kind of like we have to give some instructions. But with the Compute Utility Network, uh, we can just tell the systems that our, our like, the, describe the task. For example, um, if we're uh, if if I want to process the a a a, a video that of the whole building from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and I want to like mark all the people existing in the video, I want the outcome in 30 minutes, and here is the data, and then we give all these kind of descriptions to the system. The systems can help us to. Uh, pick, for example, the best title uh, predicting model, allocate proper amount of resources based on the data set that our customer provide. And also, we can create a service instance to uh, process this workload and do the work. And the only thing that we required from our customers is to describe the tasks. And uh, the I think the last experience is that uh, we're trying to establish a new like computing ability trading model. We're trying to use the blockchain to allow all the compute utility providers to register their uh, their computing resources and to to mark the price for their uh, computing resources. And then the whole system base will uh, will like uh, provide all the all the resources directly to the users based on those informations on the chain. So this can definitely help our users to get a more uh, diversified uh, resources and also can help the uh, computer utility providers to um, gain better uh, resource usage. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is a CFN technology map. Um, we are trying to allocate all the related technologies into the three layers of the architecture. And uh, some of them, we have already given them some new names. Um, currently, we have already covered the technologies circled by the yellow dash lines in the open source communities. For example, uh, the edge computing. We are trying to track the edge computing working group 
uh, in OIF, which is led by Eodico, and and also we're trying to uh, track the LFE Acrino project. And for computing native, which is focused on the cross architecture and heterogeneous computing, we are trying. We have already launched a subgroup named Computing Native in OIF CFN Working Group, uh, which will be introduced later. And also, we're checking some uh, heterogeneous computing related projects like the uh, One API uh, or the Triton, uh, and also for the uh, computing net offload, uh, which is targeting on the acceleration of the applications and the infrastructure layers, we are following the OCP. And for the cloud native, we are uh, checking the CNCF. So these are the uh, things that we have already done with the open source communities. And also, uh, we are trying to like plan some new directions. Uh, for example, the intent sensitivity, uh, which uh, is the the which is trying to figuring out the ways that we how to understand the user's uh, description on the tasks and the user's intentions about their uh, their their uh, required service uh, within the systems and some um, for example unified orchestration uh, the technology where uh, it is trying to like uh, figure out a better way or a more intelligent way to achieve converged uh, computing and networks of the whole systems and things like that. So um, I think the uh, CFN has a very big map. And for our team, uh, we're trying to like um, figuring out uh, whether uh, figuring out how to like cover this in the open source communities one by one. So uh, that is the key technologies here. And um, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so this, yeah, this is the uh, CFN working group introduction. Um, to in order to promote the development of the system in open source ecosystem and to accelerate the maturity of the key technologies, um, China Mobile has uh, led to launch this uh, CFN working group under OIS last year in July. And now currently the working group has involved 19 members, including the global telco operators like China Mobile, China Unicom, China Telecom, some device vendors like uh, Huawei, Inspur, ZTE, and cloud providers like Red Hat and 99 Cloud. And uh, the CFN working group is trying to explore the typical use cases. And we, based on those use cases, uh, we will work out the uh, requirements on the end-to-end -end workflows, the overall architectures, and the key technology features. And after that, we're trying to implement those uh, feature code and cover the system integration and testing. So uh, the CFN working group is trying to uh, organize a open source um, CFN landscape that can help the um, communities to know that which is in the system. And then next slide, please. Uh, and this is the current uh, CFN working group organization uh, structure. Uh, the CFN working group um, uh, has currently established the technical audio mechanism by the TSC. And also, we established uh, some release procedures. And we launched four subgroups uh, led by different um, partners. Uh, they are a uh, use case and architecture subgroup. It is led by China Mobile, and it focuses on the uh, the use case exploration, the architecture design, some end-to-end -end pro processes design, the key technology sticking, and uh, based on all the uh, work, we will try to give some um, open source recommendations. And the next second uh, subgroup is the ubiquitous computing. It is led by Inspur. And 
uh, it is focusing on the scheduling of uh, distributed and diverse compute utility. And the third uh, subgroup is uh, computing offload. It is led by Huawei and it focuses on the accelerations and offload with the DPU. And the fourth subgroup is computing native. It's also led by uh, China Mobile and it focuses on the cross architecture compiling and execution. And in the maybe in the next year, we're trying to um, uh, establish a new subgroup related to the integration and testing. And this uh, new subgroup will focus on the uh, uh, collaborations of among all the uh, different subgroups and the and and end to end integration. So I think that's um, all from my side about the background and of the CFN and CFN working group. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I I'm blown away. Uh, I learned so much about CFN, both the, the the concept and architecture, as well as learning about how the uh, the working group uh, and the working groups work is structured. Um, so um, on the slide, I can see that there are uh, three technical subgroups: the ubiquitous computing and scheduling, the computing offload, and the computing native uh, subgroups. Um, can you all tell us more about each of these subgroups, what they do, um, how they are structured? Um, sure, I think maybe we can um, start from the um, ubiquitous scheduling subgroup and let's invite uh, Xiao Chao from Inspur to start the introduction. Is that okay? Okay, cool. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm responsible for the ubiquitous computing scheduling subgroup, and I will introduce the platform and the main works that we have done. Uh, so this platform mainly realized the unified management, perception, and uh, cross-domain scheduling of the computing resources, such as the central cloud, edge cloud, and the social computing power to realize the integrated scheduling, dynamic adjustment, and the continuous optimization of the computing resources. Uh, so the, the next slide. Next slide. Oh, OK, uh, we, we can see. Oh, sorry, sorry. The last, last slide. Ubiquitous computing. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so we can see from the structure of the plat platform that firstly, the perception module mainly acquires the operation status of the computing and network resources, as well as the user's fitness indicators. And secondly, the strategy optimization module combines fitness rules and optimization algorithms to generate the optimal scheduling strategies of the resources. And thirdly, the scheduling module is to carry out specific scheduling management and execution. Uh, so this is the main structure of the ubiquitous computing scheduling platform. And we have uh, already completed some design and development work. Uh, so uh, that's all. Thank you. Before we move forward, just a quick question. Um, can you tell us more about the application scenarios for uh, ubiquitous uh, computing and scheduling? And also maybe uh, what components might already be available in open source from it? Uh, thank you for your question. We have already completed the design and the development of the perception module. And the scheduling module and the strategy optimization module are in the design process. And for the gateway module, we sorting through the interfaces of various cloud vendors. And for the uh, typical application scenarios, for example, in the scenario of subway video stream scheduling on the basis of platform capabilities, responsible scheduling of different tasks such as video saving, video backup, and AI processing can be realized to satisfy users' personalized requirements of delay, cost, and etc. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, that answered my question perfectly. We can um, jump to the uh, computing offload um, subgroup. Hello, everyone. I'm Jin Tao Wang, and this is computing offload subgroup. So in this group, we are focused on the DPU. As we know, uh, DPU is called the third main data center chip uh, or processor after the CPU and the GPU. Uh, the core technical concept of the DPU is offload, so that we can offload many virtualization components uh, from CPU to DPU to get a more flexible, lower overhead, and a higher performance cloud platform. So in this group, we proposed a DPU-based computing infrastructure in which the DPU software and the hardware fusion layer is realized by pl uh, cloud platform software and the DPU hardware. This infrastructure contains five systems, including management, uh, network, storage, compute, and uh, security. The management system is focused on the uh, unified lifecycle management, including virtual machine, container, and uh, bare metals. And uh, the network system is focused on the VPC network acceleration, uh, just like uh, Open vSwitch, uh, and uh, some high performance network protocol, uh, just like uh, Rock V2, based on RDMA. And the storage system is focused on the uh, disk device backend simulation and uh, the storage network protocol processing, uh, just like uh, iSCSI or NVMe. And uh, the compute system is uh, focused on the virtual I.O. performance optimization, uh, just like the virtual I.O. data pass acceleration, uh, we also call, call it uh, VDPA. And the security system is focused on the data encryption and the uh, security input. Okay, in this group, now, uh, we will open source some technical solutions to help implement uh, the DPU infrastructure. So everyone is welcome to contribute. Thank you. This is very exciting. I, I always get super excited about hardware acceleration. I'm curious though, if you can, if you can tell us um, a little bit about how China Mobile is handling the, uh, the challenges of the, uh, the coupling, uh, the software and, and hardware coupling between the DPU and uh, the cloud platforms. Okay, great question. So uh, we know that uh, cloud vendors and uh, DPU vendors uh, need to jointly uh, develop and adapt uh, their virtualization software on the DPU. Uh, therefore, we have defined many decoupled APIs and some interface uh, from network, uh, for network and uh, storage acceleration, uh, such as on DBDK, uh, SBDK, or Open vSwitch. Uh, based on these APIs, uh, cloud vendors can easily use uh, unified standard DPU hardware drivers or some SDKs to deploy their software. Uh, in addition, uh, we also built an, uh, built an out of box DPU OS, uh, which can help uh, help uh, cloud developers achieve uh, achieve less code refactoring. Uh, we will release to, uh, release it soon. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, we can move forward to the uh, the computing native work group. Hello, everyone. I'm Wei Huang from China Mobile, and now uh, I will try to introduce the subgroup named computing native to you guys. And and indeed, um, we would like to uh, more precisely name it as heterogeneous accelerator migration. Uh, technology um, about the um, background uh, the in intelligent computing ecology is uh, mainly composed of a middle how a middle wheel framework tool chain and hardware each vendors build corresponding tool chain around its own hardware and generates branch version matching different ai framework 
So the ecosystem is become diverse cross architecture and cross stack migration of upper layer applications is extremely complex, which brings development challenges to application developers, computing for services providers and chip vendors. So in order to facing ecological challenges, we proposed a technology named um, uh, computing native, or we can also call it a uh, heterogeneous accelerator migration technology. The goal of it is to uh, break the existing compiling execute tightly coupled tool chain e ecology to establish a new collaboration mechanism, uh, share the underlying hardware differences and realize cross architecture non-sensing migration and execution of applications. Build a traction model of the intelligent computing industry chain with software as the core and prosper the ecology of intelligent computing industry. Um, as shown in this page, um, as you can see, the technology architecture mainly composed uh, consists of two layers. Um, uh, the heterogeneous uh, accelerator migration abstraction layer and the computing force pooling layer. Among them, the um, heterogeneous accelerator migration abstraction layer mainly includes native interfaces based on a unified uh, programming model and converters, as well as a hardware native stack formed by a cross architecture com comprehensive compiler and runtime. Uh, generating a unified, executable program format. The computing force pooling layer mainly composed of uh, components for heterogeneous computing power restriction management, skill, uh, scheduling and pooling, achieving unified management and pooled uh, execution of heterogeneous computing power resources. Thank you. This is very interesting. I, I have a quick question to you as well. Um, if I have code and model relevant to uh, compute unified device architecture or CUDA, um, can I directly translate and transfer it to the language that your platform supports? Okay, good. That is a good question. And um, yes, of course. And uh, indeed, uh, through the computing native language converter tool, we will provide tools to uh, convert the existing CUDA language into the SQL language with support. Uh, you don't need to uh, modify the original code to achieve language conversion. Uh, we will upload this tool as a mirror image to the um, OIF community for everyone to use. We will also welcome everyone to um, participate in the project and um, develop it together. Amazing, thank you. Um, thank you. This is all very interesting. I learned so much about the uh, the CFN concept and architecture as well as the working group um, so far. And I'm curious if you all can uh, talk a little bit more about what you're working on, your progress and some of your achievements so far. Yes, sure. Uh, we have some progress we would like to share. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, after a uh, launch CAFN working group in 2022, uh, we uh, then participated in uh, Open Infra Days China uh, and held a CFN forum. We had six topics shared by uh, our partners. We got over 80 participants from uh, uh, 18 companies to uh, join the CFN forum. We uh, And then we had a roundtable session uh, in that each of us talked about their ideas and the suggestions of how to run a uh, uh, CFN working group in open source and their initial plan of uh, how to contribute to a CFN working group. And uh, in this year, April, in the Open Uller Develop Days held by Huawei, uh, in the conference hall display area, we had a large screen to show the collaboration between 
the Open Euler and Open Infra Foundation. Uh, Huawei is uh, leading the computing offload sub, sub working group. And together with Huawei, we delivered a demo, uh, which is to offload LibWord into DPU for uh, VM virtual machine management. Um, the operating system we used is Open Euler uh, for DPU and uh, the, the host. Uh, the DPU uh, hardware is from uh, Da Yu, which uh, is a Chinese company. Uh, in July, uh, the Open Infra Summit, we got three topics uh, uh, picked to deeply explain CFN DPU solution and our thoughts about heterogeneous computing. Uh, but we uh, sorry we weren't able to make it to the summit. Uh, but thanks for Open Infra Foundation uh, giving us this opportunity to attend the uh, Open Infra Live. So here we are. Uh, glad we got some uh, exposure of CFM working group and technologies. Um, then, and uh, together with Open Infra Committee in China, we are preparing the Open Infra Days in China 2023. Uh, we have a seven track and we have received 13 submissions. Uh, we are cu currently making uh, arrangements of Open Infra Days China as well as the CFN Forum. And in the CFN Forum, we will release the, our uh, officially released our CFN achievements. Uh, so uh, that's all for the uh, events. And for the technical group uh, progress, we, as Chief we mentioned before, we launched this four subgroups. Uh, for the use case and architecture subgroup, we have uh, uh, delivered a rep white paper of CFN overview and use case exploration. Uh, that uh, analyzed the that explained the, the CFN definition, analyzed the capability and service type, and the typical technologies and the use common use cases. Um, working on the uh, reference uh, reference algorithm with uh, PyTorch to help with intelligent operation and management of CFN resources and applications. Uh, for the ubiqu ubiquitous scheduling, uh, we delivered a reference uh, fun function architecture for uh, the, uh, the, the scheduling system. And uh, currently, uh, well, we have the prototype. We are working on documents uh, and the code. We will deliver the first version soon. And the computing offload, like... Uh, uh, um, like in the demo, is uh, offloading a libword from the uh, from host to the DPU, and we have already got the guide and the code on the uh, Open Dev repository, and working on some uh, uh, updates. And for the computer native, we have initial solution of a cross architecture uh, compiler and runtime, and also we are working on the documents and the code will upload soon to the uh, repository. Uh, all of the code we mentioned in the subgroup is open source and uh, managed in the uh, uh, open dev platform. And next slide, please. Mm -hmm. The initial use case we choose is um, is uh, it, the uh, for. Um, the, the background is facing with the diverse uh, AI applications, uh, and maybe they are running uh, different AI chips. Uh, so we're targeting to provide a CFN uh, infrastructure for uh, AI uh, applications. It can better support uh, AI inference and training application uh, cross vendor, cross region, and cross architecture deployment and migration. Um, so the key technologies for this use case include uh, uh, the, the, the cross uh, architecture compiler and execution part, uh, which is um, the uh, pink block, pink, uh, pink, uh, pink blocks, 
the this is the tool chain we use in the uh in this initial CFN infrastructure. With this tool chain, AI apps applications should be able to migrate between uh different uh infra uh different AI infrastructure with no additional cost. Uh, next uh, technology and uh, the distributed uh, resource orchestration and the scheduling system, uh, which is the uh, yellow block as a uh, ubiquitous scheduling. Um, it is overall scheduling of uh, tasks and it uh, can assign uh, the most appropriate resource to the computing task. And uh, for the performance acceleration uh, with GPU, uh, it also plays a, a great part in this uh, use case. We use GPU card uh, along with GPU uh, uh, softwares to help accelerate uh, the computing tasks. Uh, so all the tasks covered uh, uh, in this, uh, Initial use case will be included in the subgroups. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, we have a uh, scheduled uh, release. Um, that everything we mentioned about the uh, subgroups will be delivered. The, this release we started in July, uh, and uh, uh, like we mentioned before, in the Open Infra Days, uh, China we will release uh, the uh, everything in the and uh, hope there's uh, more people join us and uh, join the effort of our CFN Working Group. Uh, so uh, that's it. Uh, so um, I will now go through the details about the release plan. Uh, uh, since it's uh, okay, uh, since the uh, uh, release plan is uh, or uh, our our plan uh, is oh oh. Oh, words. So I will not go through the details of the uh, plans. Uh, I think that's it for the share. Thank you. Um, it is amazing progress. I um, I'm so excited to to see all this. And since this working group is uh, is an open source working group. Um, uh, in my experience, every group is always looking for people to get involved and participate. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about who is the target audience for your working group and, and how people can get involved? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Uh, so currently, we, uh, we, we welcome every uh, company and every single person as long as you uh, interested in CFN or interested in the next generation of uh, inf infrastructure. Uh, you can uh, join as a developer, uh, use case contributor, or tester, or speaker, or even challenger. Say, I, I don't have, I don't agree with that. I have different opinion. That's it's okay. also welcome. Um, the main technical area could be a cloud computing, heterogeneous computing, uh, chips, artificial intelligence, network protocol, SDN orchestration, and uh, etc. Amazing, thank you. And I would also like to remind people that if you are looking for pointers, uh, you can find uh, links and information on the openinfra.dev slash projects page. Uh, you will find a section there for the uh, the CFN working group with some uh, links and, and further materials to learn about the group as well as um, go or come in and get involved in the um, in the working group since we have a little bit of time left i wanted to ask one more question um i think it was slide eight 
minutes where you were talking about the um, the scope of the working group, um, which is kind of wide. And um, I um, I remember you were saying that uh, a couple of components are are covered in open source, and I'm wondering if you already have plans for the uh, the remaining pieces that were displayed on the diagram. Um, okay, thank you, Yodoko. Uh, I think this is a, a super good question. Um, firstly, I have to say that these uncovered uh, technologies, the, the pink ones, are definitely worth exploration. But you know that as CFM Working Group is driven by the use cases, uh, we will firstly explore the valuable use cases, analysis, the techn te technical area, the requirements within the use cases. And also we will try to uh, figure out whether uh, there is a existing soft software solution in the industry or in the open source communities. And then after that, uh, we will decide uh, whether we will cover these new technical areas within the CFN working group. Uh, for example, adding a new subgroup or adding some new subgroup tasks. So um, I think for this question, um, we will keep exploring, uh, but use case is always the first thing that we have to do. Thank you. That is that sounds great, and I would like to encourage everyone in the audience uh, who is watching live right now or will be watching this video later offline to uh, to look into the already existing use cases or maybe bring your own and share that with the working group and uh, and help them with the work of covering more and more components uh, within the working group's scope. And um, with that, um, that was our show for today. I would like to thank all our amazing speakers today, everyone from the uh, Computing Force Network Working Group who, uh, who joined the, the show today, as well as others in the Working Group who are doing the amazing work. And also, I would like to thank our audience for, for joining us live. And if you're watching offline, I hope you really enjoyed the show. Um, our next Next opening for live episode will be on November 30th, and it will be another very exciting one. It will be about container security and Kata containers. And if you don't know Kata containers yet, um, you still have time to go and check it out before the episode so you can uh, focus on the, the new um, and exciting information in that episode. We will have Zvonko Kaiser from NVIDIA with us uh, on November 30th, and he will talk about Kata containers as well as NVIDIA's use case and involvement in the project. I hope you will be able to join us for that show as well. And again, don't forget, this is an interactive show. So if you have a chance to join live, then you can ask questions and share comments uh, that will be included in the show. And um, if you have ideas in terms of what else we should talk about here, then you can also submit those on the ideas.openinfra.live. Um, web page so please go ahead and share our ideas with us and our team will be in contact with you uh, to get more details and talk about next steps and with that thanks again to uh, today's guests and everyone in the audience i hope you will have an amazing rest of your day <laughs>